On June 7th, Messi made an announcement that shook the soccer world. After a disappointing and rocky bit of time in League One with Paris Saint-Germain, Messi was ready to enter a new phase in his career. Being 36, it seemed that he was tired of dealing with the extreme pressure that is European soccer and rather just wanted to try and start settling down with his family, while still being able to play the sport that he loves, just at a lower level with less pressure. So he announced that he was coming to Inter Miami to play soccer in the United States Major League Soccer. This not only sent waves through the soccer world as a whole, but became the main headline for everything MLS, and still sort of is to this day. While getting Messi was a pretty ambitious move by Miami, they wanted more. They began leveraging the fact that players could play with the confirmed GOAT and one of the most interesting MLS transfer portals ever ensued. They made signings with players like Jordi Alba, Sergio Busquets, Julian Gressel, Luis Suarez, and even got a new head coach with Gerardo Martino. He had been the head coach of the Paraguayan national team, the Old Boys Football Club, Barcelona, the Argentinian national team, Atlanta United, and the Mexican national team. So while a lot of this team may be far past their prime, they still do have a very solid and storied crew together on paper. With Miami having one of the most historically proven and star-studded starting 11s that MLS has literally ever seen, they began a campaign to become a worldwide brand, turning into the face of Major League Soccer. With MLS being a strongly domestic league, Miami currently is in a very unique position to garner a lot of popularity internationally and become something that MLS honestly hasn't really seen since the LA Galaxy David Beckham years. After the 2023 season, Miami set off on their ambitious preseason world tour. This world tour was a way for Miami to spread their influence and show off the incredible team that they had formed down in Vice City through a slew of friendlies all across the globe. On January 19th, Inter Miami started their official preseason world tour. Seven days for Inter Miami and it begins in San Salvador, El Salvador at Estadio Cuscatlan as Leo Messi and friends take on the El Salvador national team. Happy to have you with us this evening. <laughs> The incredible super team that Miami had assembled, Barca 2.0 some would say, tied the El Salvador national team. El Salvador is the 12th ranked CONCACAF team or the FIFA 78th ranked national team in the world. So not really that good and Miami tied to them. Which is okay though, it was just the first game and it's not really like they lost or anything. The rest of the tour I'm sure is gonna go a lot better. So they were staying in the Americas with their next stop, MLS's own FC Dallas. It was time for them to show a snapshot of how this team was going to dominate their league in 2024. Paul Ariola for the first time this evening. Threading it through for Jesus Ferreira. Getting an early look at goal and Jesus Ferreira parries it. The first time that we've seen FC Dallas on the ball and it's their main man at number 10, Jesus Ferreira. <laughs> Remy Tushan brings this friendly to a close. Jesus Ferreira's goal inside of the first four minutes proves to be the game winner. Nico Estevez and Tata Martino exchange pleasantries. Not exactly the same heart palpitating stuff that we saw on August 6th in League's Cup between these two sides. But an entertaining affair nonetheless. A Dallas team that ended 14th out of 29 teams last year just beat the powerhouse Inter Miami, scoring on Miami in the third minute with Miami failing to find literally any response all game dope. So starting off pretty rough in their friendlies in the Americas, Messi and co were ready to take their next big step in the tour to Saudi Arabia. Sports are made by their storylines and one of the biggest storylines in soccer for the past couple of decades has of course been the Messi vs Ronaldo GOAT debate. With Messi going to the Burger League and Ronaldo going to the Camel League, a new debate regarding both MLS and the Saudi Pro League had started. With fans on both ends saying that the other league is worse without really being able to prove it in any way at all. Well now what better way to finally put this Burger vs Camel League debate to sleep than having an unproven and overall brand new Frankenstein team from Miami that finished second to last in their conference last year fly thousands of miles to the other side of the world to represent the MLS as a whole and go up against the 27 games straight undefeated first in the league all halal. I have to say, as an MLS fan, I can't think of a single better way to settle this debate, and I'm super happy that this friendly happened. Esperando compañía, Milinkovic Savi de primeras para Mitrovic, esta va a ser muy buena, Mitrovic. Neves levanta la cabeza Rubén Neves, saca el centro, queda en la frontal, el disparo y el 
se puede ser buena Gressel, no ha pitado fuera de juego, continúa, se hace un lío, se la termina dando a él dentro del área, el envío, Micael de cabeza, gol. De nuevo para Ruiz, ahí no hay fuera de juego, ahí va Ruiz, tarda un poquito más de la cuenta, ahí va el argentino. Pasitos en corto, pierna izquierda, porque puede llegar el tercero, qué buen recorte de Ruiz, continúa, vamos a ver si no se ha liado de más. Que veremos también aquí en Dazón. Ojo, se envió Malcom, gol. Termina marcando Malcom de cabeza en la jugada inmediatamente posterior. To be completely fair, it actually was a pretty good game. Miami made all Hoel give up the same amount of goals that they had given up in their past 13 matches combined, so they honestly had a pretty good showing. But regardless, this was still their third game in a row in their preseason without a single win on the incredible world tour that was supposed to showcase the Avengers cast that they had put together. Miami losing, which I saw coming miles away, was just another kick in the face to the club and overall is annoying as hell for any MLS fans because this game, completely unfairly, gave MLS haters cannon fodder to preach that MLS is a farmer's league compared to other up-and-coming leagues like the Saudi Pro League, which I have to say is just another huge W for the Miami World Tour. But thankfully the next game was just as, if not, an even bigger deal, with Messi and Ronaldo's clubs facing off with Inter Miami vs Al Nassar. Miami still had a chance to redeem themselves and get this trip rolling in the right direction. Shocker trying to show a replay of Otavio Turner and immediately a quick restart that we built a calendar was late. Mohamed Moran draws the pass. Talis Rosevitz. And in! And his world tour. What a ball. Taliska! You literally cannot write this fucking shit. <laughs> Inter Miami went from being a team that internationally people were excited to see play together with incredible players to tying the El Salvador national team, losing domestically to FC Dallas, and then traveling to the other side of the world to lose to Al Halal, and then getting their shit kicked in by Al Nassar. At this point, the tour had turned into a Ronaldo fanboy's fucking wet dream, which I would completely disagree with personally, and I'll probably talk about this more at the end of the video. While it was really fun having a 3-10 aggregate against the Saudi teams coming away with two losses, Miami's next stop was off to East Asia with Hong Kong. Miami was to play Hong Kong's starting 11 in front of almost 40,000 fans. Taylor, right footed curling effort, and it is a stunner! Almost a sense of relief. On the air, to his feet, and it's turned home. The forward from Estonia has leveled things late in the first. Scoops it forward, and this one is turned home, and Inter Miami have gone back in front. It's Lawson Sunderland. Here's Campana. Messi and Suarez didn't play a single minute. So those 40,000 fans that paid anywhere from hundreds to literal thousands of dollars to see Messi play were not exactly happy. And the PR of this tour took an even more insane nosedive that I don't think anybody could have expected. But Miami did win their first preseason game, beating the Hong Kong All-Star team 4-1. Those are the results that you absolutely love to see. After the rough line of games that Miami had played and with the PR nightmare that was the Hong Kong game, rumors were brewing. Headlines started coming out about players like Messi possibly being injured and the possibility of Miami calling the World Tour early and simply going home before they really started racking up injuries or God forbid embarrass themselves again. However, the show must go on and the cash cow that is Messi and co must be milked. So the tour was to continue onwards, this time to Japan to face off against 2023 J-League champions Vissel Kobe.
They lost again, this time in penalties. While just another embarrassment on the field, this game was at least a bit better from a business viewpoint compared to the Hong Kong game. First off, Messi was subbed into the game uh, in the 60th minute, so the fans that paid thousands of dollars to pretty much just see Messi actually got to see him this time. And so there wasn't the outrage that occurred after the disaster that happened in Hong Kong, which was a nice upturn for the tour. However, they still lost the game with a pretty lackluster and <laughs> entirely uninspired game, and then missing three straight PKs to give it up. While this once again is just a preseason and doesn't really matter, anyone who's been watching these games has to wonder up to this point if this is just a snapshot of the season to come. Because no matter how many stars you have on a team, you can't just expect a team that is composed of a lot of brand new players to have good chemistry if they aren't given a good preseason window to practice and work on playing with each other in a low stress environment. But regardless, Miami was headed home for their final game in the wondrous World Soccer Tour against Messi's boyhood club, Newell's Old Boys. Gressel back to Bright, forward, simple ball to Messi. Messi driving forward, still Lionel Messi! Oh! Jordi Alba, Lionel Messi, they lulled him to sleep. Messi! Um, some verticality. Taylor again taking the corner, floated back post, Borjo in, dunks on him! Point blank header was missed, uh oh, this is going to be a better chance. Diaz alone, Diaz levels the match for So they tied it home to finish off the preseason tour. I honestly kind of expected them to lose just with <laughs> how things had been going at this point, but I have to say that tying is still a very flashy and exciting way to end this whole shit show of a preseason. I don't really know what to like say at this point. After this world tour, the team has been exhausted from thousands of miles of traveling. Miami had multiple extremely embarrassing losses. They put a weird tarnish on the MLS against the Saudi Pro League. Pissed off thousands of fans all over the world who just bought tickets to see certain players that ended up getting injured and not playing. And the team hasn't really even been able to just play together and build chemistry in a low stress, chill environment before the real season starts. So yeah, I don't know, ending the preseason tour with one win, two ties, and four losses is not exactly what Miami expected, I think. But regardless, this is genuinely just probably one of the funnier fails that any club in MLS has ever had thanks to its insane exposure internationally and just the amount of eyes on the whole situation. If you had written this story, it would have felt fake just from how like impossibly bad it went. But I don't know, we'll see if this dumpster fire of a start for Inter Miami can be fixed and you know, to see if they can get things set in the right direction for the 2024 season. I wanted to touch up on the Al Nassar game and what that means in the whole Messi vs Ronaldo and MLS vs Saudi League debate. First off, I will say that Ronaldo literally didn't play, and Messi was subbed on at the very end with 6 minutes left when the score was already 6-0. So if anything, the game shows that Ronaldo is surrounded by a better core group of players who don't really need him to succeed on the field, while Miami's performance kind of shows that Miami struggles without key plays and the leadership that Messi brings. I just get so annoyed when I hear people saying Pessi because of this game because it just doesn't like make sense. I'm definitely a Messi fan, but I'm far from a Messi fanboy, and I could honestly care less if people were saying he's worse than Ronaldo. But to use this game as like a piece for the argument is just so stupid because it like literally just doesn't make sense. Nothing about this game showed anything pro Messi or pro Ronaldo. They really just kind of used the GOAT debate as a way to attract a bunch of viewers for their shitty preseason friendly. I also wanted to say something regarding the whole trip and what I think it represents, you know, the, in the bigger picture for MLS. Fair warning, what I'm about to say is definitely some it's not that deep shit, but I digress. With Inter Miami making these massive signings to bring star names over to MLS to garner tons of attention and views, many people expected them to dominate the league. With European star talent, no matter how old or washed up, there's always a possibility that they're gonna throw around MLS teams as they please. Because at the end of the day, MLS is a developing, lower level league for young players to develop and get a solid base to jump off to the top European clubs. However, to see an expensive, very quickly assembled Miami team fail in something as simple as a preseason tour gives me weird optimism for the 2024 season and MLS's future as a whole. The league has matured and gotten to a point where if you want to see true success, you need to first build a solid foundation for your organization. And then once your system is in place, it can develop and lead to general success for your team for years to come. You see this being the case in teams like Columbus, Portland, Seattle, and Philly. 
These aren't exactly the biggest markets in MLS, yet they have been in the league for a while now and have found great, consistent success in the league due to their fundamentals and principles that they have cemented in their organization. Not because they just had a bunch of money to sign a bunch of random European star power. Now, will I be eating my words when the season hits and Miami starts thrashing the league? It's definitely possible, but I kind of doubt that it will happen. I'm sure they're going to be a great team with probably a home playoff game, but I doubt they're just going to run away with the points. That is, if the preseason has taught us anything. But yeah, I don't know, I bit the Miami bullet and I made a video on them because nothing else in the MLS matters right now. I think this preseason is genuinely just a really funny, interesting blip in MLS history that is just a really fun thing to cover right now. If y'all have anything you'd like to add to the Messi and Co. discussion, please drop it in the comments. I love responding to y'all and I have a lot of fun just like talking to people about MLS, so I'd love to see some discussions brought up in the comments. But yeah, that's about all. Thanks for watching.